Good morning, everybody. My name is Teddy Z, and I'm honored to be here with you. Um, I have spent uh, most of my career, 30 years in Hollywood. Uh, I produced uh, films like Pursuit of Happiness, uh, Hitch. Um, I brought uh, Chow Young Fat to Hollywood for his first film. Um, I worked as uh, executive vice president of Columbia Pictures and senior vice president of Paramount. Um, I'm a member of the Oscars and the Emmys and the Producers Guild. And this is my way of saying that uh, as a member of Hollywood, uh, I've now transitioned to help use Hollywood to, um, to introduce new technologies to the world and hopefully to adopt blockchain and to help blockchain become mainstream. Thank you. I, I'm no expert at blockchain, but I'm a big believer in blockchain. And I look at the environment we're in right now. It's a terrible bear market. And many of the projects that are out there right now, I believe, won't exist five years from now, maybe even two years from now. So the key for the future of blockchain is really getting to scale and having mass adoption. And I think one of the biggest drivers of mass adoption has been Hollywood. With Hollywood influencers, with content, with celebrities, uh, it's been a big uh, marketing push having Hollywood get behind anything. And when I say Hollywood, I, I just don't mean Southern California. I also mean it could be K-pop or Korean dramas. It could be uh, gamers, it could be sports celebrities. It's, it's really about utilizing pop culture. Now, in the world that I come from, Hollywood is very well known for being slow to adapt to new changes. Uh, I've lived through so much in Hollywood, and I've witnessed an entire industry get destroyed, the music industry, because Hollywood used to control the channels of distribution and basically buried their heads in the sand when MP3 came around. A lot of that kind of traditional thinking still exists, but Hollywood's trying to change, but in their DNA, there's issues about taking risk. So one of the ways I look at it is, of course I would like Hollywood to become a leader, but one of the ways to do that is to, how can Hollywood help blockchain uh, go into mainstream, and at the same time, how can blockchain help Hollywood survive? Because Hollywood used to be the king, but with Apple and Google and Netflix, these companies have taken away that centralized power that Hollywood had. And in order, it's odd that Hollywood, who used to be the center of everything, now has to become reliant on decentralization in order to compete globally against these big tech powers that control platforms and control data. So in a way, it's the survival. It's the, all the generic benefits of blockchain. It's disintermediation. How can Hollywood that used to control everything now has to pay 30% to Apple or 42% to YouTube or 80% to local distributors, their economic survival in the future relies on getting rid of the middleman. Also, trust. Hollywood distributes films all around the world, but has to rely on local distributors who may not have the most transparent or scrupulous methods of accounting, something that Hollywood is well known for, uh, Hollywood accounting. But the idea of the immutable ledger and the transparency is really, really important. And other aspects, uh, whether it's in gaming or, or in interactive television, the idea of having smart contracts and microtransactions is really key to including the audience uh, and gamifying their experience to have them feel like they are taking ownership over a lot of the content and the platforms that are out there. So if Hollywood is bold enough to adopt the blockchain, you know that the blockchain will be a part of our futures. So the sooner we can get a lot of the celebrities and the big content companies to 
at least stick their toe in the water, that will usher in a new era for blockchain and how we interact and how we transact will change. Thank you. A question for Terry. You kind of pioneers in Hollywood using blockchain. Can you mention, give us some example of your investments? Sure. So um, one of the major ones is a company called Watcha. And Watcha is the Netflix of Korea. And they started out with an app that's a recommendation engine that um, is very, very smart. It's more accurate than Netflix. And what they've done is they've created a platform now, a tokenized economy for content owners to distribute and it, uh, to the world, but they get to disintermediate. They need to, they get to get around the YouTubes and the apples of the world so that they get to retain the greater percentage of the revenues while the users end up also getting a better um, experience and uh, becoming a part of the uh, process itself. So um, company, they've developed contents protocol and it's a formula where um, they will go from each country in Asia to be able to bring the benefits of blockchain and a tokenized economy. And I, and I believe that actually Asia is the best place for it to happen. You know, we all know in the United States where we like to think that we're so advanced in so many ways, but in truth, uh, the mobile economy has taken off throughout Asia, tokenized economy and game playing and has all virtual uh, currencies uh, have all been um, really taken root in Asia first. So I believe that uh, as much as I like Hollywood to take off first, the uh, places like Korea have been have been a hotbed of activity for not only blockchain investment, but also uh, use of tokens. You know, I go back to the 90s when the internet was first starting, and so many companies talked about the infrastructure of the internet and how it works. And in a lot of respects, when we come to conferences like this, we get into how long the transactions take and what, how blockchain is built. But the truth is, for it to go mainstream. All of this conversation needs to be invisible. As a user, nobody cares how it works. Users only care about what it does. And I think the sooner we get the conversation to the general public talking about how blockchain can make my life better, is the sooner we get to blockchain becoming mainstream. Well, I wanna give an example of one, which is a company called Oben and it's an AI company with computer vision, which um, they can take your picture and create a photoreal 3D avatar, and then take two minutes of your voice and be able to recreate your voice in any language perfectly so that they can sync your voice with your avatar. And the use cases are all over the place, including healthcare where a medical professional can be, you can have an image of a doctor without the doctor being there um, talking to you on a constant basis if you're an outpatient. But the founders were smart enough to say, the way to really get adoption is through Hollywood. So they came to me and I recommended that we integrate with K-pop celebrities so we did a partnership with uh, SM Entertainment, the largest K-pop company in the world, where they would create avatars for celebrities and create an agency. And because of that, it was able to get investment from SoftBank, from China Media Capital, Tencent, HTC, all because there was a component of celebrity associated with it. So for me, it's, it's really about there's so many companies coming on. How do we evaluate them? The checklist I use, do they have experience in the industry that they're trying to serve? Do they have real users? Do they have real revenues? Do they have real brand? And because it's so hard to tell what the future is going to look like, I really think that mainstream adoption requires partnering with companies that allow you 
to scale quickly with real users. So that's your first criteria. What's, can you mention the top criteria you're looking into specific projects? Again, it's, well, it's always the management team. Okay. And what is their experience? Do they have credibility in blockchain? But more importantly, do they have credibility in the vertical that they're uh, addressing? What's their chances of achieving scale? Do, that, do they have the resources and the revenue? So many people have a great white paper, but no experience in the industry they're serving. Do you think there's a bubbles in right now the token economics? Of, of course, and as, as much as I'd like to say, um, you know, blockchain is gonna disrupt everybody, the way for real adoption is to find some middle ground between the existing big players and the technology we live with now. I, I just think that uh, I can't answer that question because that's what's happening today. We're just building the foundation of what's gonna happen tomorrow. The same thing people said about Amazon way back was, why would I buy a book online? Why would I buy clothes online? Girls need to try it on. But yet, Alibaba and Amazon are huge today. So everybody always says no at the beginning. I'm a believer in change is inevitable. If you wanna say no, it's not gonna happen, you're gonna bury your head in the sand and watch the world pass you by. I think we're all here smart enough to know that the world is changing with us or without us. We can either be on the leading edge of change or we can be left behind. And I think we're all here because we wanna help change the world. Good job, the videos were, were fantastic, yeah. 